My name is Laura T. And today I am going to read the book, That's Not Fair, which is Emma Tanayuka Struggle for Justice. The book was written by Carmen Tafoya and Cheryl Tanayuka. And I'm sharing this with you today because this is a very important story in our family's history. Um, actually, Emma Tanayuka is my husband's aunt, and Cheryl Tanayuka, who helped co-author, uh, was also Emma's niece. And we wanted to share that story with you. Um, Emma was an, an honored figure in Mexican American history. Uh, she noticed some things around her were not fair and she dedicated her life to changing that. Um, she taught other people to read, she taught children to read, and she learned the value of sharing what little she had with those who had even less. So let's read the story. We start in 1925. The little girl with shining black eyes walked eagerly to school. She passed a small shack that had no door. Inside, a baby was crying, and his mother tried to warm him with her thin arms and her thin shawl. The little girl knew that they were cold, and her black eyes flashed. She passed a boy, maybe four years old. In his hands were a few small pecans he was shelling and sharing with two younger brothers. They ate eagerly, as if that was all they would have today. The little girl knew they were hungry, and again, her eyes flashed. When she arrived at school, her teacher announced happily, Emma, look, we have a new book to read. Emma loved to read. She had read every book in the classroom. But even as she pored over the new book, she kept remembering the children she had seen that morning. After school, she took the new book home and read it again and again. As she sat on the front porch reading, Maria, a neighbor about her age, peeked over and asked, what are you doing? I'm reading a wonderful story. Would you like to read it too? Oh, I can't, said Maria. I don't know how to read. Last year, I was starting to learn the letters, but then the weather began to get warm and the flowers began to bloom, and my family had to go far away to pick onions. We picked onions, then strawberries. We picked cabbage, then cotton. We picked beets, then corn. By the time we came back, school has ended. Summer had passed and school had started again. When I went back to school, I was lost. Everyone already knew how to read and I didn't. I had missed it. Emma's black eyes flashed like lightning in the black sky. That's not fair. Maria sighed. Now I'm so far behind. I'll never learn to read. Emma grew very quiet and the little girl's words stayed inside her for a long time. On Sunday afternoon, Emma went with grandpa to the park. The air was crisp and cool. The sun was shining. Wonderful smells of roasted corn and freshly made tamales filled the plaza. People laughed and music played. Grandpa's large warm hand was holding hers and Emma felt happy. But in one corner of the park, people were quiet, listening to a man speak. By his side, his wife held a baby and by her side were six children, lined up like stair steps. Emma looked at their clothing, thin and torn, and at their beautiful brown skin, deepened in color by the sun. 
How will I feed my family? The father asked. We worked all summer picking crops, but when it came time to get our pay, the farmer chased us away with a gun. Now we have no food and no place to stay. Grandpa saw a flash of lightning in Emma's eyes as she whispered, but that's not fair, Grandpa. That night, Grandpa poured a cup of frothy hot chocolate for Emma. Then Grandpa held her in his arms. Emma told him about the cold baby, about the hungry little boys, and why Maria couldn't read. Her words tumbled out as if they had been shut inside her. It's not fair, she sobbed. Grandpa listened, and her words touched the depths of his heart. The next day, Emma and Grandpa went for a walk. They passed large, handsome houses and tiny shacks. From both, people smiled and waved at them. They walked on and saw people hard at work. Some were going into dark, dreary factories to shell pecans, and some entered elegant buildings. They saw a man so old he could hardly walk, but he cradled a guitar in his arms and sang. The words sounded so beautiful that his rich voice almost didn't need the melody. Emma smiled as she repeated the words to herself. Son, the song said, you are so even, so fair, as you share your light so equally with everyone. You should teach my boss to be as fair as you. After the walk, Emma was still humming the song. Again, Grandpa poured hot chocolate into Emma's favorite cup. As she drank the soothing cinnamon chocolate, Grandpa said, Sometimes things are not fair, but still, each one of us can usually do something about it, even if it's just a little thing. Emma asked, Like when we gave the man in the park our ice cream money? Maybe he bought milk for the baby. Or the other day, when you took me with you to vote for laws to make things fair. Grandpa nodded. And the old man, he helped too, said Emma, by singing a song with the right words to help people understand. The next day, on the way back from school, Emma saw the three young brothers. Here, she said, as she handed them an apple from her lunch sack, but she knew it was just one apple. They would finish it before she was around the corner. Then Emma saw the young mother with the thin shawl. Here, she said, handing her brand new blue sweater to the mother. It's for the baby. But she knew it was just one sweater. It might only last through a winter or two. When she got home though, she began to teach Maria letters, words, and how to read. And this, Emma knew, would last forever. Years passed and Emma grew into a smart, kind teenager. 
All around her, there was hunger, misery, and poverty. And the poorest of all the workers were the pecan shellers. Many were only paid four cents for their best hour of work. Most of them were Mexican American. Most were women and some were children. Emma began to speak to others about things that were not fair. She spoke in public parks and in the market where the farmers sold their vegetables. She even spoke on the steps of City Hall. When she spoke to the people, her dark eyes flashed and her voice was full of courage and caring. The people listened and her words touched their hearts, sparking hope as bright as lightning in a dark night sky. Let me fast forward to 1938. But many of their bosses would not listen. They wanted to pay the workers as little as they could. When Emma was 21, the bosses decided to drop the pecan shellers pay even lower. Now they could barely make three cents for an hour of work. The workers feared, feared that their children would starve to death. Emma was angry. She saw so many people go to work when it was still dark and not come home until late at night. Many worked so many hours that they were coughing and sick and still they did not earn enough to feed their children. She saw owners work one or two hours a day. They had so much money they would throw away elegant clothing they had only used once or throw away food that the workers wished they could give their children. She spoke to the owners, begging them to think of the workers. One owner laughed. What does it matter that they are poor? He said, they are Mexicans. Emma knew that was not fair. When the pecan shellers asked her for help, she knew just what to do. You must stop working until the owners listen to you, Emma said. We will make a soup kitchen to feed your families. If we all help each other, we can win. No one will listen to you, some people said, laughing at her. But 12,000 pecan shellers listened. The factories were almost empty. For nearly two months, the businesses made no money. Many of the owners hated Emma for this. She was threatened and jailed repeatedly, but Emma would not stop fighting for justice. Finally, the owners were forced to raise the workers' pay. It was only one victory, but the story of the pecan shellers appeared in newspapers all across the country. Those who had been powerless had won against unfairness. People everywhere celebrated. The poor loved Emma for what she had done. She had given them a voice and given them hope. Tomorrow would be brighter for everyone. And that, at last, was fair. So let's answer a couple of questions about the story. What were some of the things Emma saw that were not fair? And I'll give you a minute to think about it. Okay, what did you come up with? Uh, I've got a couple things that I noted. Um, it was, a lot of it had to do with because family members had to work so hard that 
including the children, that some of the children didn't learn to read. They couldn't go to school because they had to work instead. Maybe you had that one. Um, there was also the condition she saw that, that people worked really hard in difficult conditions and they were not paid fair wages. And because of that, families went hungry and they couldn't provide basic needs for their families, even like food and clothes. And maybe you came up with a couple others too. Uh, let me ask you a second question. What were some of the ways that Emma helped other people? I'll give you a minute to think about that. Okay, let's talk about that. One that stood out to me um, was her helping to teach her neighbor, Maria, how to read. Did you think about that one? Also, uh, how she helped other people. She didn't have much, but she still was willing to give up a few things that she had, like the food she shared with the boys and, and her new sweater that she shared with the mom uh, to use for the baby. And also, I think another big one was, was her speaking up about things that were not fair, including the, the conditions people worked in and especially the unfair wages. So maybe you thought of a few other things and I hope you get a chance to reread this or to re-listen to this and learn a bit, little bit more about Emma and how she was so brave and helped others and uh, is a great example for us that we can do the same. So thank you for spending some time with me today. Bye.